Uh, let's go to the live chat here, Cam. JT Sounds asking, hey, Cam, what do you expect from DJ Ivy and how much of a difference he makes as our second best corner? Uh, I expect him to be in the number three corner, first of all, uh, behind Al Blades, who started the opener, and Trajan Bandy, who's clearly the best cornerback. Um, so that's a little bit of housekeeping there. I think that that's going to be um, – I think it's going to be good for Miami because uh, North Carolina likes to run a lot of plays. Phil Longo, their offensive coordinator, is a tempo kind of guy. So you're going to need guys to come in and take some of those snaps. Um, and it it was different against Florida because, you know, there were only 56 defensive snaps, 66 offensive snaps. The game was played at a very slow pace intentionally by both sides because, you know, they wanted to kind of shrink the game and lessen the variance for uh, – trouble for their quarterbacks, uh, even though both quarterbacks had some moments of brilliance and also of trouble uh, for Florida. But against North Carolina, we're going to need guys to play defense, uh, multiple guys uh, just to, to rotate through. The, the rotations are going to expand. And I know that that's the thing that everybody wanted to talk about after the Florida game, uh, myself included, of, you know, hey, I thought that other guys could have gotten in and, and had an impact. You're going to see that. So DJ Ivy is going to play some major snaps uh, in this game. North Carolina obviously wants to spread the ball or spread the field. So they're going to have, you know, three and four wide. So you're going to need more defensive backs, guys who can cover, whether it's man, whether it's zone. DJ Ivy is one of those guys. So he's definitely going to be a, a much needed addition uh, to that. And then also puts to Corey Couch further down the rotation a little bit. That puts Christian Williams further down the rotation a little bit uh, at cornerback. And those two guys are true freshmen. So you don't want them playing, you know, 60 or 70 snaps, even as in a sub package, because, you know, North Carolina is going to run a ton of plays. So, yeah, DJ Ivy going into the game is going to be a major deal. Uh, he's going to definitely uh, be a player who's going to impact the game. He's going to uh, just allow Miami to have another starting caliber player in the rotation already. To Corey Couch, I think it's going to be very good. I think he's physical for his size, except for he's only 160 pounds. And he's five foot eight. Um, and DJ Ivy is just a bigger physical kind of a guy. And that's going to come into play in both the pass game and the run game. So getting DJ Ivy back off his suspension is undisclosed, whatever it was, undisclosed for the opener, um, is a big deal for this defense. And, you know, God forbid anybody gets injured instead of going down and playing a true freshman as your number two cornerback. Now you're playing a sophomore who was battling for a starting job all fall. So just that, that little bump of depth. I think is going to be a big key moving forward. Kim, if I grabbed the roster and I was able to pinpoint the most insignificant player on the roster and I threw out his name, how much would you be able to talk about that particular player? Um, I mean, at least I can give you probably 90 seconds, maybe more. I mean, like, and again, this is, this is right in the wheelhouse. You know, if I'm covering recruiting and knowing these guys from when they're sophomores and or sophomores and juniors in high school in through college, that's six or seven years. You know what I mean? Like I write, you know, thousands worth of words uh, in, in recruiting profiles for every single player. I'm writing updates every month. I'm, you know, reading everything. I'm talking to people like I'm getting the whole picture. I need to get out a little bit more, but going to these, uh, you know, South Florida football games and things like that. These are guys that I have seen. I mean, I still, I know people that I used to work with whose kids are on these football teams. You know what I mean? Like when I say, oh, Miami's recruiting Brian Balaam now, I'm like, cool. His brother had my class seven years ago at Miramar. Brian was in my study hall two years ago. Personally, I had personal talks with this man about his aspirations to go to college uh, as an IB student, a high achieving play, you know, student. I you know, had open houses where I've spoken to both he, uh, both he, his brother, and his parents. Like, what do you want? I mean, it's just that it, it, it's what I do. When you made the DJ Dallas comment and explained why people were commenting on him needing to, you know, step up and show and and that he was going to be fired up uh, again, it would cross my mind is, is there anything that gets past this guy? Um, <laughs> Meaning you. Not too much. And honestly, I, I have the quickest reflexes on the timeline. If I see something... I, I move really quickly. Um, and yeah, you know, I just, I go through and I see what people are talking about and things like that. So, I mean, I try to make it my job that not much, if anything gets by me. So I'm glad that, you know, it comes through when I speak and I'm glad that you guys, you know, appreciate it and realize it because, you know, it is a, it is a time consuming process, but it's something I love to do. 
Absolutely, folks. So realize what you got here is uh, we bring the best discussion, debate, and analysis, regardless of the team, as best we can, considering I'm one guy. Uh, but I bring on uh, great talent and, and Cam uh, front and center. So again, just the knowledge, the insight, the storytelling, the the voice, the voice. You can't uh, you, you can't uh, bypass the voice.